Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Jay Pushkar. Mike Fenner was on assignment and Tom Decker has the night off. Four District 10 Boys Basketball Championships were on the line Friday evening, including a marquee matchup in Class 4A between 22-2 and two Harbor Creek and 20-3 and three Hickory. We'll pick things up in the first half of play. Peyton Melly would spot up, bury the three-pointer for the home team as this one had the early notions of a back and forth contest. Huskies counter at the other end. Ryan Whitman drives, finds Casey Smith down low for the short floater. More from Harbor Creek, the quick pass as they were off and running. Sam Hall at the other end, he scores. Harbor Creek up by three. On to the second quarter now, Jackson Pritz powers his way to the rack and scores. Then it's Matthew Canone being aggressive. He too attacks the rim. He scores two more for the Hornets. Harbor Creek responds with a defensive rebound and another quick outlet pass. This time at the other end, it's Gavin Ennis with the finish, and that was a tough one, too. Huskies then work the paint. The feed down low to Cody Smith. He muscles his way for a pair. Moments later, it's Hal dribble driving and then dropping the floater as he would finish with a team-high 16 points. On to the third quarter of play. Hornets down by seven at this stretch. Off the missed three-pointer, Joe Fazone comes up with it and then scores quickly. This game got very physical down the stretch as well. Hickory crashing the boards, and eventually it's Fazone with the bucket and the foul. Somehow in that moment, Cody Smith would be disqualified after receiving a flagrant foul, and that certainly turned the momentum in the favor of the Hornets. Back to the action. Hickory working the ball back inside as Pritz is able to lay it in. He finished with eight points. Hickory up by one. Jump to the closing seconds of the fourth. Huskies down three. They find Hal for the bucket. Harbor Creek down by one. Now, after two made free throws, the Hornets up by three. Harbor Creek with one last chance to tie it up, and it hits the back of the iron. And Hickory survives on their home floor. They beat Harbor Creek by the final of 39-34. to Thus, claiming this year's District 10 Class 4A championship, it was a physical contest, but the Hornets come out on top, and they certainly get the hardware to prove it. I, I, I love them. I, 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 I don't want them to leave. I mean, they're, they're so competitive. They're so coachable. Uh, they do everything we ask them to do on both ends of the floor. They try their darndest every single time. I, 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 I don't want them to go. It's usually disappointing. I mean, I got to look at it. You know, they're, they're claiming that he, he took a uh, shoulder to the face or neck or something. I, I didn't see it the same way. I could be right. I could be wrong. I, I honestly, I don't know until I look at it again. Meanwhile, there you see the final score. Harbor Creek falling on the road 39-34. to The Hickory Hornets advancing to the state playoffs. Championship game in boys class 3A. Franklin hosting Sharpsville. Blue Devils going inside to their big man, Max Staunch. Misses, but he stays with it and gets the put back to go. At the other end of the floor, Knights would go to Hayden Adams as he would drive to the hole, takes it into that Blue Devil defense, and he scores the tough two. Sharpsville stays in the paint. This time, Blaze Campbell in the lane, gets doubled, finds an open James Thomas for the underneath layup. More from the Devils this time. It's Campbell hitting the three-pointer as he gets the nice feed, all within rhythm, knocks down the triple. Not to be outdone in that department. Franklin's Easton Fulmer with the deep three-pointer. Nothing but net. More from the Knights. This time it's Fulmer driving inside, kicks it out to Damon Curry. He connects from downtown. Franklin goes on to protect its home floor. They take this one by the final. A 56 to 47. They are your AAA champions of District 10. Cambridge Springs paying a visit to Kennedy Catholic in District 10. Class 2A championship action. Blue Devils in business early. Hunter Spade. Slices his way through the Eagles' defense and somehow gets this one to go. Later on for Cambridge Springs, they would go underneath to Jaden Shinsky. He's able to get the feed and go off the window for two. Back comes Kennedy Catholic, though. Gio Madrestro comes up with the steal. He's going to go the other way as he would finish with 10 points. Then Elijah Harden got into the act as well, knocking this one up from top, plus the foul. Later on, another huge night for Dazon Young. He knocks down the step back triple for KC. Moments later, it's Young taking the long pass. 
and he's going to score the easy two as he led all scorers with 22 points. Kennedy Catholic rolls in this one 66 to 49, winning its sixth District 10 championship in the last eight years. Class A championship game, Farrell hosting Jamestown. We'll pick it up in the third quarter with the Steelers leading and adding to it off the missed initial shot. The rebound is by Omar Stewart and he scores on the putback attempt. Then off the other offensive rebound, it's Muhammad with a rebound and score. Steelers with that stingy defense continuing. Cabron Smith gets the steal, goes the other way. He lays it in. More from Farrell off the loose ball. It's Muhammad left open for three. Nothing but net as the Steelers started to pull away and they take this one, the final 60 to 35. With hopes and expectations of reaching high on the podium, the PIAA State Wrestling Championships began on Friday in Hershey. The Class AA had the spotlight down at the Giants Center this afternoon. No one locally was able to get to the gold medal match, but the highest place winner would be Harbor Creek's Connor Pierce. He wrestled to a fourth place finish at 132 pounds. At the heavier weight classes, Timmy Church of Fort LaBeouf and Hayden Linkerhoff of Corey dropped their first two matches and settled for consolation medals. Meanwhile, Gerard's Jordan Shell finished in fourth place at heavyweight. In college wrestling, a pair of Edinburgh Fighting Scots are gearing up for the Division I National Championships scheduled for next weekend. This afternoon, Jacob Oliver and John Spaulding were back in the practice room looking to stay sharp before they leave for St. Louis in just a few days. I actually think that my mind is more ready than it would be dealing with the circumstances we did, knowing that you know we didn't know we were going to have this opportunity, and now that it's here and it's there, um, I'm even more ready. So I'm really excited. My body feels great. I know it's it's hard to be in shape at first. I mean, you have to do your own little workouts, run on your own, do little things on your own. Um, overall, I think the short season was nice in a way because there's less injuries, but it also makes it harder too. At the Division II National Championships, Gannon had eight qualifiers, including six regional champions in action. Still alive for a national champion is Alex Ferenczak at 165 pounds. He won the first two matches of the day. He is in the championship semifinals on Saturday. In the heavier weight classes, Gannon's Freddie Nixon won his opening match at 285, but then lost the final.